Hey there. Um, I got an email from a former client recently and asking me about developmental stuttering. And so it occurs to me that we don't talk a whole lot about stuttering here, but it is something that most kids do at some point or another. And so let's talk about it a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, stuttering, and I'm going to show you some kinds of stuttering in a second, um, but stuttering is something that, number one, we all do. We all have some disfluencies in our speech, meaning like we'll pause, as I just did, um, or say um, or you know, and now we're going to be all tracking <laughs> the ones I'm using during this podcast. Um, but we all do it. We all have to go back and change what we meant or pick a different word or pause and think about things a different way. That's normal. If somebody had completely fluent speech all the time, they would sound like a robot. So that's baseline. But let's talk about it as regards young children um, who are still learning, and the younger they are, the, the less they've already learned, right? They're still learning how to control their mouths and connect them with their brains and match them with the words that they want to say. So there's like, again, I, I am constantly, and if you listen to this long enough, you know, like how we're all just not like walking around bumping into each other all the time and that we can actually describe things that don't even exist is amazing, right? <laughs> so, but that process is just beginning in childhood. Okay. At some point, it is likely that one or another of the systems that need to be involved in speaking, in having an idea that gets connected to a word, that gets connected to a plan to say a sound, and then a bunch of sounds, right? And then putting all that together to make a story. At some point, one of those steps in the process, one of those steps in the chain is gonna get disrupted. That's for sure. Either internally, like brain is just not doing what it needs to be doing in that moment because it hasn't learned how, or there's some kind of glitch, or we're tired, or we haven't eaten, right? Or because of some external stimulus like a loud noise, right? That'll make you forget what you were about to say. Um, and so at any point in this chain of, again, thinking about what you want to say, finding the words, putting it in order, speaking those words, and having somebody listen, there's a lot that can happen. There's two big things that um, relate to children learning how to speak fluently. Two big, I don't know, things that happen. One is that their brains are moving so fast because they've just learned a bunch of new words that they can't quite put it in the right order to have it come out. And so, 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 and so they get stuck like that. And that's where you'll see like a lot of word repetitions, a lot of I, 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 mommy, I, 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 I want, and then whatever it is that they want, right? Because either they're like trying to remember the word or their brain is just like moving so fast that again, they can't sequence all those, all those things that need to happen. Um, and so word repetitions, phrase repetitions, so totally expected particularly when kids are like three, four, sometimes earlier. Um, once kids get to be about five, six, we don't tend to see as much of that because their big vocabulary spurt is over. Um, but you will get six, seven um, year olds who are still doing this, this, this kind of buying time, right? While they're thinking about what to say. Okay, so that's one thing that happens. Um, and then the other part that happens is time pressure. And so often um, kids are, there's a couple of different things that happen. Many kids who stutter are temperamentally um, sensitive. They tend to lean orchid um, in, their, in their personalities, in their temperament. And so they're very sensitive to the environment. And so if they have an inkling that somebody else might cut them off, not give them a chance to talk, that they might need to fight for their right to speak, <laughs> that's going to put time pressure and add it to whatever else is going on internally in terms of like what the message is and how important it is and all of that, right? 
that time pressure can increase um, disfluency because it's increasing stress, right? And so everybody's got a threshold where they cross into the level of stress that is now um, harming them, for lack of a better word, right? Affecting their performance, right? There's a level of stress that enhances performance. And then once we cross the line, there's a level of stress that now inhibits performance, right? And so if we think about wanting to get your message across very, very urgently, there is a level of stress at which that's gonna be harder. And that's where you might see some kids struggle. Now, there's lots of different ways to stutter. Many people are very, very uncomfortable about stuttering. And so if you notice, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate some in a second, but if you notice that your child is stuttering, it is completely okay to say to them, whoa, that looked like it came out kind of bumpy, or, whoa, that looked like that was hard to say. Because what are you doing in that moment? You're just validating their experience, right? And we talk a lot about validation here. Um, validating someone's experience allows them to feel understood. What will calm you down faster than anything else in the world? It is feeling understood, right? So it is perfectly okay to talk about stuttering. Um, in the past, we didn't used to say that, and we have realized the error of our ways. So it's okay to call it out. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate for you now um, some ways in which kids stutter. And if you see this kind of stuttering, you should absolutely reach out to a speech therapist. Not because um, your child is going to be a lifelong stutterer. Um, and we know that about 70%, 80% of kids who stutter at some point in their life, most of them are going to grow out of it. So we already know that. There is a small percentage that will continue to stutter, and that's okay. The thing we want to do in speech therapy is, number one, tease out whether this is going to go away or not, and number two, what are some strategies that are going to work for this child just in case it lasts a little while. Um, and again, the ones who tend to um, maintain the stuttering are usually those, the sensitive ones, the ones who are aware that there's something at stake. Right? And so once we wire that kind of anxiety with it, um, it, it, it sometimes perpetuates it. Okay, here are some things that you want to look for um, if you have a child who is experiencing some disfluent uh, talking, meaning bumpy talking. So, so getting stuck on one sound, usually at the beginning of a word. It might sound like just one long sound, like I just did, or it might sound like repetition. Um, and sometimes what can happen, it can look like a loss of control. Um, and if you see that, you want to call the speech therapist and just kind of have them probe a little bit and work with your kiddo as to what's happening. Have them learn how to understand what's happening, how to manage what's happening, how to stutter better, um, which is really the goal of stuttering therapy, which is kind of cool. Another thing you might see is when I get stuck, I might do something with my body that helps me get unstuck. So in that moment just earlier, I looked to the side as I was saying when, because I was stuck on the W. That is um, something that can happen sometimes. Our bodies, um, they help us out. And so we, kids can develop sort of these um, secondary behaviors um, that will help them get through the moment of stuttering, but they become very disruptive. And so if you see uh, any kind of like pounding on the table or, you know, sort of grimace or tension, um, anything that's not directly related to the formation of sounds, but that is helping the kid get through it, you want to talk to a speech therapist about that because we don't want that to keep happening. That's more disruptive to communication than it, 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 if someone is just stuttering smoothly, right? And there are ways to stutter well. I just demonstrated a couple of them and I maintained, right? You could see I was still looking at the camera. I was very smooth. 
I slow down. All of that is helpful. And again, that's part of learning how to stutter better. So long story short, most kids stutter at some point. Mostly, well, always, you don't have to worry about it. If you have questions or you see something like the, the things that I mentioned earlier, call a speech therapist. They can help you figure out, is this gonna last for a while and do we need to manage it? Or is this kind of, we can do some environmental changes and this is gonna just kind of slink off into the night as development happens. All right, there you go. All, everything you wanted to know about developmental stuttering in, I don't know, what is it, 10 minutes or less. Until next time, take care.